Hello everyone and welcome back to another Stormworks video. In today's video we're going to be going ahead and doing part 4 of the submarine build here in advanced mode on the creative island. First things first what we're going to do is we're going to be adding a auto depth hole to the submarine itself so we can maintain a certain depth or desired depth that we want while the um, submarine is moving. Along with that we're also going to be adding a custom door so we can get in and out of the submarine along with any cargo that we need to put in it while we submerged. Um, and then along with that we're going to be building up the interior area but adding a couple extra features in there. So with that done and said uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So we've gone ahead and come back to our workbench uh, here on the island. So first things, I've done a couple things uh, since the last video in part 3 to now where we are in part 4. Uh, first thing I've added a little guard to the propeller at the rear of the submarine. That's just to protect it just in case that we are on the sea floor or we reverse into something uh, so it doesn't go ahead and actually damage the propeller itself. Along with that uh, you'll see that we have now moved the air intake from the rear of the submarine to the actual tower itself. Um, that's just by using the pipes going all the way along inside the submarine and that's just so that we always get fresh air um, because obviously with the waves it sometimes will go over that air intake so we're ruining the engines we always want air to be coming through. Uh, and then going into the interior uh, you'll see here we've added a couple just dividers to obviously separate the different sections in the submarine itself. Um, those air pipes as you can see now are running towards the roof of the submarine and going to the tower itself and then towards the rear we've just gone ahead and moved the batteries from this area to the actual engine compartment and that's just in solely just to give me a little bit more space in the actual uh, main compartment of the submarine and then we've also gone ahead and just moved our two um, cooling systems from here just towards the rear of the engine bay just over here so exactly the same system we've just gone ahead and moved it back a little bit so with that all done and said we'll start going ahead and we'll start building the interior um so as i said in the intro we're going to be having a custom door uh which is going to open up and we'll go ahead right now and start building that that custom door is just going to be over here so we can actually now go ahead and actually load. So when we fully submerge, we can actually load cargo into the submarine itself through the store. So what happens, we open this, it will then flood this area up. Uh, we can then load what we want to and then close it. And then it's going to go ahead and drain that whole system for us. So with that said, uh, we'll start adding the custom door parts. So we want the door frame corners. Go ahead and just add four of them to the submarine itself. I'm going to go ahead and quickly just enable our X-plane. And then we're just going to be placing down the four corners. Once we have the corners placed down, uh, we also want to just do a controller. Now the controller itself is just going to be able to enable us to lock it. So with a simple toggle switch, you will go ahead and lock the door. Um, and then obviously you won't be able to open or close it using a, a toggle button. You have to physically go unlock it. Then you can actually go and unlock. I mean, then you can go and open and close it. So with that placed down, we can now go ahead and place down our robotic hinge. Sorry, the robotic door hinge. So I'm just going to be putting down one just on the side as this is how I want the door to open. You can place this wherever you want, uh, on the sides, wherever. Uh, it's really up to you at the end of the day. Once we have that placed, we can now go ahead and start doing the edges of the door itself. So we'll just go ahead and just start filling all this in. Once we have that all filled in, we can now start doing the center piece of the door. So we'll go ahead, we'll just grab uh, our corners. So make sure you have all these lined up right as you can see all the arrows are in the right direction and same goes with the inside of the door to make sure the arrows are on top and they're all pointing outwards that done we can go ahead and now start just building the frame of the actual inside piece of the door now you can see here i'm not using a corner piece and that's just to slowly put it down and then we go ahead afterwards and then put the corner piece in just to speed up the process instead of constantly changing blocks now with that done, uh, you can see here it's obviously not the same piece, we just need to go to merge and then we are. So what's happened is now we actually need to delete these, go back and just make sure we place it down on the door itself and now we can go in here and do that and you'll see that it's now the same piece. You want to make sure it's the same piece otherwise it's going to get stuck when you're opening it. And then you can go ahead and just simply put that there um, for visual effects only. I'm going to be going ahead and trying to put down something different. I'm going to use a helm and see if I can place this down just to make it look a little bit different from what you're used to. 
So let's put this. As I said, this is completely visual purposes only. It will not work and serve any purpose at all. But I think that will look quite nice to have that, have it like that. So almost like it's a proper, proper hatch. So with that done, uh, we obviously need to go ahead and I'll just quickly start connecting all this up. Um, now, in when we open this, this is obviously going to fill with water either before or afterwards, depending on how we set up the system. Um, but obviously, we need to get this enclosed so we don't get water throughout our whole submarine. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is just build another custom door frame here, and then another custom door frame here, and then another one just going here. So pretty much just separating all our compartments within the submarine, just in case that we do get accidental water in, uh, it's going to secure it and then we can actually pump it out by adding different systems in. So I'm going to go ahead and add those two custom doors and then I'll meet you back when it's done. So we've gone ahead and built our three custom doors inside the submarine just to separate the different compartments. The next step in the process is going to be for our wet cargo room area is going to be to go ahead and actually add our pump system for that. So then what happens is it's obviously going to go and fill the system when we want to open the door and it's going to go ahead and drain the system when the door is closed. So to do that, obviously, same as how we would set up any normal pump system, we need one fluid port to bring water in and we need another fluid port to take water out. So with that said, I'm just going to go ahead and delete a block here. This is where we're going to add our actual fluid port. So once we have that placed down, we can now go ahead and place down our next one. So obviously that's just going to fill the compartment itself. So once we have that placed down, we can now go ahead and start adding our piping for the system. And I'm just going to have a simple system where it's going to take water in. Now, obviously, we're working in, in um, mirror mode, so it's going to place on the other side, and that's great. We do the same way, so we place everything down, and then at the end, we'll go ahead and just delete one of the, pu one of the pumps and place them in the other direction that we don't want. So we'll go ahead, just fill this all up with the piping, and then go ahead and connect everything. So once we have that connected, that's our, pretty much our system done um, as far as pumping in and out, which is going to be great. Uh, we can now go ahead and just change our pipes. So as you can see here, how the pumps are orientated at the moment is going to be, if I can get in there, they both bring water in. So we obviously want one to bring in, one to bring out, disable our, our mirror effect, and then we can just go ahead and replace this block, obviously in the opposite manner to how the other, pipe, the other pi uh, pump is placed at the moment. So we've got all that set up. Um, obviously, as now you can tell, yep, there's our port there outside. We can go ahead now, that's all taken care of. We can now move to our next section. The next section in the submarine itself I wanted to do was a sleeping compartment for the crew. So we can go ahead and start adding the beds in. So I'm just gonna go ahead and place down a couple of blocks. I'm gonna go ahead and re-enable my axe plane two blocks there, and we'll go ahead and grab our bed. Place the bed down there, and then we'll see if we can possibly get another one in. As you can see, we can't because we have our actual piping going across the roof here. If we were to go ahead and delete our pipes, we'd be able to put another bed in. I'm happy with just two two beds at the moment. Uh, obviously, you can change this to how you want in your own, in your own build, um, but we'll leave it like that for now. So next off, what we need to do is we're going to start filling out the actual main interior room itself um, or the main compartment itself, obviously with different desks and stations for all the different control systems in the submarine itself. So with that said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start putting in the framework for that and then we'll meet you back when it's all put in and then we'll start adding our dials and our switches and setting up different stations for different things. So welcome back everyone. We've gone ahead and added just our framework for our control stations. So as you can see here at the front, I've just gone ahead and just added a pilot seat. That's going to be to control the submarine itself. And then I've just gone ahead and set up two stations here. We will be going ahead and actually filling the walls up on either side with all our controls. The same goes with the front. We'll go ahead and actually start adding all our controls. So with that said, uh, what we'll do, we'll start off first by going and doing our systems for our wet room. So to take care of that, we obviously need buttons on top of the system to get in. So I'm just going to go ahead and just add a simple button just over here without deleting our blocks that we need. <laughs> so I'll go ahead, delete a block there. I'm just going to be using a simple toggle button. 
but that's pretty much just going to be to control this door or hatch over here. Once we have that placed on, we obviously need to control all three of these hatches. In order to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and place a button in the floor next to each of these. Obviously, we are quite tight for space inside the submarine, so we need to make use of everything we have, including the floor itself. Uh, hence the reason, obviously, you can see how I can't place it on any of these sides of the door because obviously we have our custom door there. If you were to go ahead and just use a normal door itself, uh, you wouldn't have the issue and you probably have a little more space. However, I'm just using custom doors for the visual effect of this tutorial only. So now we have all these buttons placed down, we can actually start going ahead and start wiring this up. Now our custom door, doors themselves, uh, as you can see here, I'm just gonna hang over it. Uh, you can see here that they use a numerical input to control them as I covered in one of the other tutorials so if you give them a one it's going to open one way if you give it a minus one it's going to open the other way and a zero a number value of zero means that it's actually going to be closed so in order to do that we need to obviously use logic to control that I'm going to be using switch boxes and the switch boxes themselves are just going to be to send us different signals so when you spin our toggle on it's going to open it or send a signal through of say one for example open it and when we click it off it's going to send through a signal of zero and then actually close the doors themselves now obviously we have one two three four so we're going to need four of these control panels i'm just going to go ahead and make use of the extra space i have here inside the engine bay and then that's where we're going to be placing the logic so we're going to go place down four of these along with that we're going to just go ahead and place down our numerical numbers so we just need one on either side and then we'll use that to control the whole system so on this side I'm going to use a value of one and then we can go ahead and connect that onto hold down down control and then we can connect that to all our ons go grab the one that's going to be zero and connect that to all our offs once we have that connected up we can now obviously go ahead and start connecting these to our doors I'm going to connect one to the first door, second one to the second door, third one to the third door, and then the fourth one to our door or hatch at the top. So once we have that, we can now go ahead and start connecting our logic uh, or toggle buttons. I forgot to put a toggle button to open it from the inside, uh, and solely I'm going to be doing is just going ahead and putting a toggle button. Let's see. I'm going to put one just over here. Why not? You can go ahead and place wherever you want. Um, I was going to push one, put one there for the purpose of this tutorial. And now we can, as I said, we can go ahead and start connecting all this up. So we want to link it to the other toggle button that's going to be on the uh, outside of the submarine. And once we've gone and connected that, we can now connect that to our logic blocks. And then the same goes for all these doors here. You just want to connect into the art, into the art, into the art. That means that it's going to have the same signal on either one of these doors. And then we just need to go ahead and connect to the logic. So you can see here that this one is that block there. So we can just connect that there. The next one over here is the further one. Connect that to that. And then lastly, you can see that our last door is connected to the far one so we'll go ahead and just drag our far one across here so that means all of this should be working now uh, what I'll do quickly is I'll just go ahead do our um, switches for our pump and then the pump and out for the wet room itself uh, so as I said earlier when we open this or when we press this button we want this room to be filled with water um, so in other words what we can do is when we click that the pump turns on and then when this button's off, we want our, our pump to be constantly emptying that tank. So we can go ahead and just use a logic block for that. So we're just going to use a not value. So once again, go to the rear, place our logic down. So we can connect. So when we're not pressing this, it's taking that signal and telling this pump to empty if that makes sense. Um, pretty much that's about it for the logic for all the custom doors and things. We'll go ahead and just give this all electric and then we'll spawn it in and see if we got that all working. Let's go to our batteries just over here. As you can see, nothing is connected. I've deleted all the logic from the last tutorial um, because we, I thought we'll start fresh with this because now we're starting to change everything. So we need to obviously connect all our batteries up together. So while I'm here, I'm just gonna go ahead and connect all our batteries.
and then we can go ahead and connect it to all our buttons that we need right now to test the actual system itself. Don't forget the pipes and the pu sorry the pumps. I think we have everything that we need right now just to test those custom doors are all working. Yep. Fantastic. Okay, great. I'm going to go ahead and just spawn this in quickly and then see if our custom doors are working. Let's go ahead and climb up the ladder. If I can stay on. <laughs> climb. There we go. Fantastic. So if we go ahead and press that, that opens. Perfect. And then you'll see now this, this is actually starting to fill up with water, which is great. That's exactly what we wanted. Now we go ahead and close that. Let's close the door. And you can see now it's actually gone ahead and it's draining our wet room, which is perfect. That's exactly how we want it to work. We'll go ahead and just test all these other custom doors that we put in just to make sure they're all working. Yep. Uh, as you can see, I'm a little bit too tall to get through this hatch. Uh, so I might go ahead and actually just extend this in another video, um, but we'll leave that for there for now. And that custom door doesn't like me because we've gone ahead and it's actually hitting that uh, bed that we have there. So we just need to make sure that we invert this custom door here. So go ahead and we'll fix that now and then we'll start adding our other controls in. So welcome back everyone. We've gone ahead and fixed the issue that we've had with the door itself. Um, and we just done that by inverting the number that controls it, whether to go in and out. So that's done and fixed. Uh, next off, what we've done is we've gone ahead and placed down all our components needed to control the submarine. Now, these are exactly the same components that we had temporary on the wall to the left of the submarine earlier on in the previous videos. Exactly the same ones, as I said, placed all down. The only difference is now, I've, instead of using dials, I've used gauges to measure the um, front and rear ballast. I've added a couple of key switches instead of toggle buttons. And then I've also added a couple of different buttons here to control our depth system itself. So once that's said, uh, we can now start building our depth system. Now, first off, you want to obviously measure the altitude of where we are currently. Uh, so I'm going to place it down there. Just remember, wherever you place it will be the current measurement of the altitude. So at the moment, I'm placing it here, which should probably output a value of probably positive 0.2 to me um, at where the submarine sits. So once we have that placed down, that measures our altitude. Next, we need to obviously control it. Uh, take that reading and then measure it and send it out to our control fins uh, to control obviously how we pitch in the water whether we need to go more down or more up. Now to control that I'm going to be using a pit. Now the pit itself I'm going to quickly just place down. I'll place down over here for the purpose of this video. Um, now we'll go ahead to our logic and I'm quickly going to talk about the pit. I'm not going to go full detail how to configure it. But I'll quickly talk to you about the, the general idea of it. Um, it has an on and off switch quite useful. It has an output. It has two inputs. One is the process variable and one is the set point. The set point is where you want it to be, pretty much the final result. So this will be our, our desired depth. So on that keypad we enter negative 10 for example and it's going to be it's going to do its best to get to that negative at 10 value. Our variable in that is the altitude itself. So the altitude, obviously, depending where we are in the water and how far down we are, that altitude value is going to change. So that will be our process variable. Our output is going to be, obviously, to control our fin rudders or our control surfaces that control the pitch. Now, obviously, because that is going to be giving a positive value out, we want it to do the opposite of that. So if we're too far down, we want it to go up. If we're too far up, it wants to go down. So hence, we need to obviously invert that number. Now, to invert that number, I'm just going to be placing down a numerical input. So that's the output taken care of. And we can go ahead and now quickly and just connect that up to our two different ones on the tower and then the ones in the rear. Now, one thing I didn't mention in the last video um, that I messed up was the orientation of the Koning Tower um, control surfaces. These need to be opposite to the ones that you have in the rear. So you can see here these ones are now positive going up and these ones are negative going up. So I've gone ahead and fixed that. Now, next thing we need to go ahead to do is to control this system here is going to be our on-off switch. For myself, um, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to give it a constant on signal. So the actual control is always going to be on. You can go obviously and just use a toggle switch instead. And then you can, if you want to use the auto depth system and then actually do it manually instead, um, you could go ahead and use your pilot seat and then 
you can link that up to a switch box or to a and signal it's really up to you uh, on how you want to link that all up web story i will just go with the auto depth system always being on and then always following our input so with that done uh it's all connected last thing we need to go ahead and do is just double check all our electronics are connected as always everything's connected and then lastly, we need to go ahead and do is actually configure our PID. Now, the PID itself, as I said, I'm not going to go into details of configuring that in this video. I will do a separate video. There's also a guide on Steam that goes through how to set this all up for the purpose of the tutorial. Uh, and then also for my helicopter altitude hold systems, I use 0.20. That's how I found it works. It might change for you. So you, if you go ahead and copy that, it might not work for yourself. All depends on weight and the outputs and what you're using as controllers and so on and so forth. I'm just going to go ahead and use that for this tutorial. So once we have that all set up, we can go ahead now and spawn this in and see if it works. So you can see here now by default, the keypad gives a value of zero. So you can see now, obviously, this is as we're bouncing up and down the water, the pit is wanting to go ahead and control this so that we always stay at a height of zero. That's fine. It doesn't matter. It's not really help, hurting us at the moment. However, as I said earlier, you can go ahead and change that to how you want. So once we have that done, we can go ahead, jump into our seat. I'm going to go jump in the seat and start filling our front and rear ballast tanks. Along with that, I'm going to set a depth of minus five to start off with. So we can see if we actually get to that altitude. As you can see here, we're currently at zero altitude, which is perfect. And because we're only running on the electric and our batteries are full, we don't need to start our diesel engine. So we'll start going forward. As you can see here, because our ballast tanks aren't completely full, it's now wanting to bring the rear of the submarine up. But as the tallet ballast tanks get fuller, you'll see now that obviously the rear is going to get a little bit more fuller. I'm just casually just pressing the throttle down further, further, further. As you can see, the submarine is sinking more with our ballast tanks getting fuller and fuller. And now I'm going to give full throttle. And you should see that the submarine is going to go ahead and balance itself off at the desired altitude. So you can see here now, it's now currently, I'm not pressing any buttons except the forward button to control it to go forward. As you can see here, it's now perfectly keeping us at a desired depth of five. For some reason, I don't think I've connected this. That's why it's not telling us we're at that altitude. Um, but if we go ahead and I'm just gonna go switch and change that to minus 10 you'll see now that the submarine is going to dive and then it's going to level out at an altitude of minus 10. So that's pretty much about it. Um, I've, sorry for the video being quite long today. Um, I've tried to cover quite a few different things in this tutorial. Um, as always, guys, I hope you've enjoyed it and liked it. Uh, don't forget, we do have the Discord server up, so please feel free to come join on that. Just send me a message or send one of the staff guys a message if you want the um, subscriber role. And then we'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe, and we'll see you in part five.